This is a quote from Soren Kierkegaard's 1847 book, Works of Love, translated by Howard V. and Edna H. Hong in 1995, published by Princeton University Press. Let us suppose that someone said to Christianity, It is absolutely certain that I have been baptized. Does that mean that it is indeed also absolutely certain that I have faith? Then Christianity would answer, be it done for you as you believe. Although not baptized, the centurion believed. Therefore, it was done for him as he believed. Only in his faith is the gospel a gospel. If the centurion, although he came and asked Christ for help, had in his soul been somewhat dubious about Christ's ability to help him, and Christ had said the same thing to him, be it done for you as you believe, what then? Would it then have been a gospel? No, not for the centurion, because it would be a judgment upon him. This be it done for you seems so swift, but this next part, as you believe, exercises a powerful restraining influence. On this text, one can preach rigorousness just as well as leniency, because this text also has rigorousness the Christian rigorousness that certainly has not hesitated to exclude the timorous from the kingdom of God, or perhaps more accurately has not hesitated to teach that the timorous exclude themselves, so that a person can no more bully his way into God's kingdom than he can cowardly and spinelessly whimper his way in. In these days, when in the political sphere there is so much talk about security and security, we eventually carry this over into Christianity and let baptism be the security, which it certainly is, if you actually believe that, be it done for you as you believe, is the security. If one were right in making baptism into security as a matter of course, that would surely be the end of rigorousness. But God is not mocked, nor does he let himself be made a fool. He is too sublimely transcendent ever to think that to him a human being's effort should have some meritoriousness. Yet he requires it, and then one thing more, that the human being himself not dare to think that he has some meritoriousness. But God is also too sublimely transcendent to play the childish game of the good God with a cowardly and slack human being. It is eternally certain that it will be done for you as you believe. But the certitude of faith, or the certitude that you, yes, you, have faith, you must at every moment gain with God's help. That is, not in any external manner. You must have God's help to believe that you are saved by baptism. You must have God's help to believe that in the Lord's Supper you receive the gracious forgiveness of your sins. It is true that the pronouncement of the forgiveness of sins is pronounced also to you. But the pastor does not have the right to say to you that you have faith. And yet it is pronounced to you only if you believe. Be it done for you as you believe. But everything in you that is of flesh and blood, and is timorous and attachment to things of this earth, must despair, so that you cannot acquire an eternal certainty, a certainty once and for all, and in the easiest manner. See, this is a struggle of faith in which you can have an occasion to be tried and tested every day. The gospel is not the law. The gospel will not save you by rigorousness, but by leniency. But this leniency will save you. It will not deceive you. Therefore, there is rigorousness in it. If this like for like holds true, even in relation to what most definitely must be called gospel, how much more then when Christianity itself proclaims the law? It is said, forgive, then you will also be forgiven. Someone, however, might manage to misinterpret these words in such a way that he imagined that it was possible to receive forgiveness himself, although he did not forgive. Truly, this is a misinterpretation. Christianity's view is, forgiveness is forgiveness. Your forgiveness is your forgiveness. Your forgiveness of another is your own forgiveness. 
the forgiveness you give is the forgiveness you receive not the reverse that the forgiveness you receive is the forgiveness you give it is as if christianity would say pray to god humbly and trustingly about your forgiveness because he is indeed merciful in a way no human being is but if you want to make a test of how it is with forgiveness then observe yourself if honestly before god you wholeheartedly forgive your enemy but if you do remember that god sees it then you may also dare to hope for your own forgiveness because they are one and the same god forgives you neither more nor less nor otherwise than as you forgive those who have sinned against you it is only an illusion to imagine that one oneself has forgiveness although one is reluctant to forgive others no there is not a more exact agreement between the sky above and its reflection in the sea which is just as deep as the distance is high than there is between forgiveness and forgiveness it is also a delusion to believe in one's own forgiveness when one refuses to forgive for how could a person truly believe in forgiveness if his own life is an objection against the existence of forgiveness but a person deludes himself into thinking that he himself for his part relates himself to god and on the other hand that with regard to another person he relates himself only to the other person rather than that in everything he relates himself to god therefore to accuse another person before god is to accuse oneself like for like if someone is actually wronged humanly speaking then he must take care lest he be carried away in accusing the guilty one before god ah we are all so willing to deceive ourselves we are so willing to deceive ourselves into thinking that a person for his part should have a private relation to god but the relation to god is like the relation to the authorities you cannot speak privately with a public authority about something that is his business but god's business is to be god suppose a domestic servant to whom you perhaps are otherwise well disposed has committed a crime a theft for example and you do not know what to do about the matter then above all you do not privately approach the highest public authority because he does not know of anything private in matters of theft he will promptly have the guilty party arrested and initiate proceedings similarly if you want to pretend that you are completely outside the matter at hand and now privately want to complain to god about your enemies god will make short shrift of it and bring charges against you because before god you yourself are a guilty party to accuse another is to accuse yourself in your opinion god should so to speak take your side god and you together should turn against your enemy against the one who did you wrong but this is a misunderstanding god looks impartially at all and is wholly and completely what you want to make him only in part if you address him in his capacity as judge yes it is leniency on his part that he warns you to desist because he is well aware of the consequences for you how rigorous it will become for you but if you refuse to listen if you address him in his capacity as judge it does not help that you mean he is supposed to judge someone else because you yourself have made him into your judge and he is like for like simultaneously your judge that is he judges you also but if you do not engage in accusing someone before god or in making god into a judge then god is the gracious god that was from works of love pages 378 to 381 i hope you enjoyed the reading